and those three things are as follows uh, first of all first of all just go to your SCCM just go to your SCCM and go to boundary boundary is your first stop within boundary I need to right click and create a boundary so right click here right click on the boundary right click on a boundary create a boundary so whoever is not following write notes so right click on the boundary create boundary and within the boundary first of all it's asking you for the boundary description and the boundary description here is that I'm saying let's say this is by this is uh, uh, this is this is for floor one so I'm gonna say this is canops floor one and canop floor one just like I said, we can create boundaries in, in many different ways. We can create by IP subnet, by custom IP, by AD sites. So here are those types. I can create it by AD site. I can create a boundary based on IPv6 or I can based on IP subnet. Now here, if I go by IP subnet, here all I need to do is 192.168.105.0. But if, but what if if I need to just just uh, uh, point to Kasim's machine, one machine, range, then right. what I can do? I, I can always go to IP range. In range, I can just say that this is uh, his his oh. IP address is 192.168.105.30, and it starts with 30 and with 30, just one IP address. Let's say if I want to anything apply this client machine, so so just create one boundary. But for now, in our case, we are creating a complete subnet, and our subnet is 192.168.105.0, and then the subnet mask. We all know subnet mask is 255.0, and it automatically takes the subnet ID. So it automatically takes the subnet ID. So all you need to do, write the complete subnet, write the name, description, and then you created this. So that's the only thing you need to do. So once this is done, all you need to do is apply and close. Once you close it, it is done. It is created. So once this is created, second your second stop is boundary group. So we just did this part. So we just created our boundary. Now the second part, all you need to do is boundary group. One more time, let me show it to you one more time here. So I'm going to delete this and recreate it one more time. So all I need to do is right click on boundary create a boundary and create a boundary we'll name it canops f floor one and subnet is 192.168.105.0 subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 and done apply okay uh two second exercise delete recreate quick 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 delete it recreate it there, yes. was, there was an option on that IP address range for boundary group. Uh, it was not IP address range, it is IP subnet. Yes? The window just opened. There is an option for boundary group. We can create a boundary group here. We can create it here, but I want to create it outside. So one more time, I'm doing it one more time. And that is, again, CANX floor one. And it is 192.168.105.0. And this and apply. Okay. So your boundary is created. If boundary is created, go to boundary group. So in boundary group, it's very simple. Now boundary group, remember the remember why is boundary group? Because this one location has many boundaries. So it's a combination of one boundary. A boundary group can be just one boundary as well, or it can be number of boundaries as well. So in this case, we have just to so create a boundary group, right click on boundary group, create a boundary group. So once you create a boundary group, here, name it. So it, the name is CANF Building 1. CANF Building 1, and here, right here in boundaries, I'm going to click Add, and add the one boundary that I created. That's it. So you just created a boundary. Now within boundary, as soon as it is done, you would apply it and close it. So when it is one boundary, uh, boundary could there could be multiple boundaries. It could be multiple boundaries. It discovers only one boundary. 
No, 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 no. It will discover whatever, how, whatever the boundaries are. So you created 10 boundaries, it will start discovering 10. So boundary is no, basically... No, boundary group, if, I, they are, they are boundary group, if there are uh, 10 boundaries, that's when you discover 10 boundaries. All the 10 boundaries, yes. Yes. It just uh, delimited that this is your exactly. range. Exactly. So basically you just create the boundary first and then you name it. Yes, that's it. And you can create as many as you want. As many boundaries you want. Two minute exercise. Delete the boundary group, recreate it. Can you take the properties of the boundary group? Okay, boundary group properties. Second tab preferences. Preferences. Yes. Okay. Uh, it says in here. Yeah, this is this is this is very important. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Is, yes, yes, it must be. So guys, here I'm gonna delete this. So let's go step by step again. We delete it. If you created it, delete it, guys. Please delete it just to for the experience. I'm gonna recreate the boundary group, and here. I need to go back and say this is CANEP <coughs> building one and I'm going to add the boundary. Now you added a boundary this time will go into pre references. In references guys assign a site to this boundary group. I am now saying this that I created this boundary group. So this boundary group assign it to the site C and D. Remember we had a site C and D. This is where I'm saying I need to assign this boundary group to the primary site. Let's say you do have boundary groups, but the other boundary group is in Montreal and you want to assign it to Montreal server, secondary site server. So this is how you can assign boundaries to different to different site servers as well. So here all I need to do is just enable this option. Say, oh, for now we have only one site, otherwise it would have showed you five other sites. So you can assign a boundary group to, uh, to, to a different site. And right here it's saying, okay, so do you want to add some servers to this? So here we're going to add and add our server, which is our only site system role, and we're, we're going to add it here. So one more time. One more time, I'm going to do this. All we did is I, I'm going to delete this again and right-click. Create a boundary group. Once you name a boundary, so I'm going to name it building one and then add a boundary to this. And secondly, I'm just going to this next tab. This is the next tab here. This tab, you go to this tab and here you just enable this check mark. And then here you're saying that this server is now operational for this complete boundary group. And here you would just Apply it and press, click OK. So now be this to the secondary one. Yes. So no. It needs to be the MP and the DP. Yes. So MP right. and DP will be now dedicated to this this site. So now if you had a second boundary group, now let me. You don't need to make it. Let me show you. Let let let's see if I had a Montreal site. So this is my site one, which is Toronto, and this is my Montreal site. Here I have a boundary for 100.5.0 and in Montreal I have a different boundary. Let's say this one. So here all I'm going to do is I'll go. So for Montreal I'm going to do this. You can create it as well. I mean it won't harm your configuration but it is better for understanding. So this is done and now we're going to create a boundary for Montreal. Okay. So for Montreal, let's go back to boundary. Now guys, boundary group cannot, you cannot create boundary inside. So this is why the purpose of boundary. Now my company gives me instruction, oh, we have a new site in Montreal, configure this, this in SCCM. So all you need to do, I will ask them, okay, the network team, what is the IP subnet they are using? Because I don't have their IP subnets. It is coming from the network team. So they tell me your subnet for Montreal is, so I'm going to create a new boundary here. And this new boundary, I'm going to say this is for Montreal, Montreal, let's say, floor 1. And the subnet they are using is 192.168.106.0. And here, so just create a boundary. It's just simple boundary. So once you created that boundary for Montreal, 
Now that boundary here, this is for Toronto. This one is Montreal. And likewise, you keep on creating more and more and more boundary. But guys, boundary is nothing without boundary group. So I'll go back here in boundary group. So you go back to boundary group and create a group now. So here I'm going to say create a boundary group. So that could be added into the original one? If you add it to original one, it, it will work, but it, it's the wrong configuration. Oh, it has to be separate. Now, let, let, let's look at this. Let me see. If I add this boundary, guys, if I add this, I have a boundary group here. The boundary group here, what is the name of the boundary group, Kenneth? Oh, building, 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 building one. Building one. So there is a, if I add this to this one, what, what will happen? What do you think? What will happen? Yes, that is. But what is the effect? So guys, if, now let, let's look at this. If you add this Montreal boundary to this boundary that exists in Toronto, this is in Toronto, then all these clients, all these clients, instead of looking for Montreal DP, they will all go to the Toronto DP. Because this is how, now you're saying, oh, this FCCM and the DP inside is for this subnet and for both subnets. Although it should be, there should be a separate DP here and they should be pointing to this. Okay, so this is why you need to have separate boundary. At this point, you don't need to remember, this is a design discussion. But here I just wanted to show you the importance of boundary, boundary group, and and your subnets. So right here. Now, in this, I'm going to go back to boundary and delete the Montreal boundary just to have less confusion. So now we have a very simple network, one boundary, one boundary group. And that one boundary group, you should be able to see, you go to properties of that boundary group, guys. Right click on boundary, boundary group. Right click on boundary group. Right click on boundary group, right click on boundary group, writing the script, script, write script, write script, whoever is not following me. Uh, right, right click on boundary group, properties, and in references. This boundary group is used for primary site, and this boundary group will use this SCCM server. So that's the only thing we did. Now, cancel this out, and now comes the third part, which is very important. Which is very important, which is this one. Which is this one. Computer name. What is this part? Discovery. discovery. So we need to en enable the discovery. So which is, we are, we, we are going to enable system. Without doing this last part, boundary group and boundaries are nothing for SCCM. You created them, but those are dead boundaries. They can, you can't do anything on them. So guys, yes. We are saying we can create the boundary from Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Because well, this is... The domain, right? it, no, 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 no. You're SCCM admin. You're only in control. So you can, create, you can create that complete configuration here. Just point it to that other DP. That's it. And DP will be the other one. Yes. So here, guys, the third part is, what do I need to discover? Do I need to discover users? I don't need to discover users. Do I need to discover groups? No, I don't need to discover groups. Do I need to discover forests? No, I don't need to discover forests. At the moment, my only my only concern is machines, is devices. So you go into system discovery and double click on system discovery and here enable system discovery. Just go here, enable system discovery. Huh? Okay. So so here, guys, first of all, you created boundary. Then you created a boundary group. Now you need to enable discovery. Why? Because without enabling discovery, SCCM will not go and discover the environment. So all you need to do is just double click on system discovery. And here, enable discovery. You're saying, OK, go and enable discovery. But guys, here, here, if I go like this and just close it, guys, this will be wrong. Now, look at it, and SCCM did not give me any error message, although it won't work. Why? Because you're missing out a very, very important point, and that important point is pointing it to canis.pri domain. So here, all you need to do is, right here, you just need to enable this option, and then right here, this star, the star, you need to click the star, 
and within the star it's saying okay so in active directory what type of where do you want to run this discovery i mean so you can run it against some ous but most of the time guys we would run it against the complete domain so I would say just CANF, browse and just select your CANF domain. As soon as you select the CANF domain, we select the store objects with an active directory groups. Hmm? We select that also, store objects with active directory groups. Uh, yes, switch on the discovery and user discovery as well. So guys, now here, I did this. So I apply and open. <coughs> One more time, I'm going to do this. So all you need to do is double click on system discovery and then enable this option. It was not enabled. You enable this option and all you need to do, click on this star and within star, select browse and in browse, just select the domain. Do the same thing for user discovery as well do the same thing for user discovery as well so all you need to do is just select user discovery and enable and run it against the domain and done Can I ask you yes so why we are uh, uh, browsing the domain sir because uh, we have already given the separate i'll give you answer I'll give you the answer. Let me let me just just one more point. I'll come back to this question. So guys, here this is your pooling schedule. So pooling schedule is every seven days. Every seven days. Every seven days it will run this one discovery. But every five minutes it will run a delta discovery. Delta discovery is if there are any changes, those changes will be taken. So every seven days it will run a full discovery and every five minutes it will run a delta discovery which is just recording changes. That's it. Now you can change this recommended seven days of full, discovery? full discovery. It is said here. Yes, full discovery. But it is not recommended to change it. If you change it, then it, SCCM will create more noise in the network because every time it will be doing the same thing. Is this a noise? So here, what is your name? What is your name? What is your name? And then again, what is your name? What is your name? And again, I mean, I am in real environment creating this noise. SCCM creates a huge noise. If it does, it more frequently. So it's not recommended to run it less than this. But if in companies, small companies, maybe less number of machines, speedy network, they can change it to one day. Large companies leave it as is. Now here, that's it. So you did this. Now, the outcome, so we did these three things. How many? Boundary, boundary, boundary group, discovery, system discovery, pointed to CANF. And the last thing I want you to do is now verify, verify if discovery is done. Discovery is done. And that is from where? Assets and compliance. Good remembering. Mm -hmm. So assets and compliance. Go to assets and compliance. Mm -hmm. So now we are out of fraud administration. Yes. Now this is the first time you're going into assets and compliance and go to devices. Now first time go to devices right here. Go to assets and compliance and go to devices. And now here, you should be able to see discovered objects. So here, you should be able to see discovered objects. So in your case, you should have some discovered machine. So you, you see all of the machines here. You see where? OK, you have discovered. And go to user. Go to users and see when users are discovered. Administrator, sorry. Good. Go to users. So I discovered only administrator. Uh, it will, it will. It, oh, maybe you've not added anything? Yes. Browse. So what are you doing? You're just a second email. It's already created. Not the users. Users are not being Go back to discovery. So guys, with this, 
if, if it is done, go for a break. Local canvas.pri. Instead of this, I would have said that only run this discovery on computer OU. Just one OU. So this is, it further limits that boundary. Although SCCM can see the complete network, but then when I am switching on the system discovery, I'm saying do not run it against the complete network. For now, it is running in the complete domain. So for now, it is just running against this complete boundary. But we would have said, I mean, I can show you, uh, all I would have said is this, I can go into administration and go into discovery and within system discovery, I would have said no. Don't run it against the domain, but actually run it against only a computer OU. So you see, these are all of the OUs here. So this can further limit, further control how discovery will run. If I say no, run it on the complete domain. So first of all, it looks at, okay, this is my subnet. Are they part of the domain? So whatever is part of the domain, the discovery will be run against all of them. Like both could be the part of the domain. Montal and Toronto. Yes, right. they we run both of them. Yeah, we separated both of these. Uh, uh, and we put the separate boundaries for this. Yes. But on top of that, we add that boundary in the boundary group. Yes. What the question is that when you are discovering anything, it goes to boundary group and check what boundaries over here. Exactly. Over here. Then it there are two boundaries. Mm -hmm. In, in the boundary group. It will run it against both of them. So what do you suggest? Do you want to do only one one side we need to check? Do we need to delete the other one from the boundary group? No, 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 no. So guys, the question here is this. Question is, let's say I have two boundaries. One boundary for Montreal and one boundary for Toronto. Now when, and, and both of them are part of one. This is, let's say, this is boundary group two and this is boundary group one. Now you're saying as soon as you run the system discovery, it will be run on this and run on this and then discover devices. It says in Montreal, I found these devices. In Toronto, it found. So the main purpose of just discovery is to just discover the devices, not to manage them. Just discover the devices. Not to so, implement anything. Not to implement anything, just to dis We will control it later on. How, how are we just want to improve on the one side? If you just want to, then you need to remove that boundary. Then you, then you need to disable that boundary, basically. From the boundary group. Exactly. From the boundary group, you need to re you need to remove it. Leave the boundary there, but remove it from the boundary group. Okay. okay? Um, now, guys, here, so the second thing that I want to discuss here is, what is, what is it discovering? So it discovered some devices. Let's go to assets and compliance. Guys, assets, assets and compliance, it discovered these devices. Now, basically, it is saying after running discovery, it went on to each machine and bring these four devices saying, okay, these four devices in all of your machines, guys, they don't have, they don't have a yes in front of them. Do they have yes in front of them? They don't, it means SCCM agent is not there. So all you need to do, basically, it will be something like, it will be something like this. So these are devices that are discovered. Okay, I'm not using these are devices discovered. Now, in order to manage them, discovery, it shows you the devices. Now I need to install SCCM agent. So we need to install. Once SCCM agent is installed, then SCCM can manage it. So indication of SCCM agent is there must be yes in front of that. There must be yes in front of that. Now, guys. Which one? Without, without agent, doesn't show the yes, because yeah. guys, without agent, actually, basically, it cannot read anything in that machine. So with agent, it is like this. So this is a machine. It had discovered it. Now we need to push the SCCM agent on this. SCCM agent will sit here and now start sending information to SCCM. By next week, guys, you should all have yes in front of it. Now this yes, I'm telling you, this yes is more difficult than getting a yes from your fiance. <laughs> I mean, that might be easy. That might, I mean, that might be easy. That might be easy, right? Uh, I mean, both sides. Okay. I mean, so all my point is, guys, be ready. This is a very complex step. 
just on client, just on client install, I have a full video. And that full video, that full video, I'm, t I'm telling you this type of client troubleshooting and, and installing agent, you won't find it anywhere. Yeah, you can find it on Microsoft web website. But other than Microsoft website, you cannot find that level of troubleshooting I've shown in my video. So if you follow carefully, I'm sure, inshallah, by next week, you should be able to have yes in front of this. And getting that yes, I'm telling you, it will be very, very difficult. Because, uh, and now I'm going to show you why. Going back, a quick review of what we have covered. So we started with here a quick reviewer, then we started talking about SCCM configuration. The very first SCCM configuration is boundary. Boundary can be of all these types. It can be one IP, it can be subnet, it can be AB side, it can be range. Then you need to create a boundary group. But without a boundary group, you cannot use a boundary. So you must have a boundary group. And then once the boundary group is done, then you need to switch on discovery. Discovery is the opening eyes of SCCM and it will now scan each machine and bring those machines back. Now, as soon as they are back, you will see those. Now, your next task is to install the client. But before going to the next task, guys, let's see these different discoveries here. So, uh, when it comes to discovery, so guys, discovery. Let's talk about our discovery. Discoveries are of six types. So, first discovery, first discovery, let's go to discovery here. Guys, go to discovery. Let's spend just five minutes on discovery. So discovery is forest discovery, number one. So number one, forest discovery. Number two is group. Group, this, and it's not just group, it's KD group. KD group. And next one? KD system discovery. KD systems. Next one? KD user discovery. KD user, next one? Heartbeat. 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 Heartbeat, and next one? Network. That's it. Is enabled by default, right? Okay, yes. So one discovery is enabled by default. And that default discovery is heartbeat. Heartbeat, guys, it simply means it simply means it's a heartbeat from SCCM client to SCCM server. So this discovery must be on all the time. It should not be disabled. This is this is this is just a, a heartbeat from SCCM client like to server. Cluster. Yes, in, in cluster you have this heartbeat. You have this heartbeat. Okay. So now you have the heartbeat. And guys, next one. Next one is um, next one is very simple. Next one is this AD system discovery to discover computers. This, this discovers computers only. This discover users. This discover groups. And this discover any IP, any IP having devices, any IP based device. Network mean discover any IP based device. So this is any IP based device. Meaning printers, meaning routers, meaning switches. Anything that has IP, so network discovery. Most of the time, network discovery is off. You don't want to switch it on. Are you sleeping? No, no. Okay. You're just joking. I mean, you can't even joke. Okay. Okay. Not even a joke. You're serious. Okay. So, so guys, here, these are all simple. My main point going back to discovery is this. So you have a it, it discovered groups. It discover computers, it discover users, it discover it is the heartbeat from client to server. And this one is network IP based. Most of the time network discovery is disabled. We don't use it. Most of the time groups discovery is also disabled. We don't use it. Most of the time you'll be using system discovery. But guys, I came back here for one reason and that is forest discovery. There is a special meaning of forest discovery. Guys, forest discovery doesn't discover computers, it doesn't discover users, it doesn't discover groups. Forest discovery only discovers AD sites. Forest discovery, it only discovers AD sites. Whatever AD sites are there, it will bring them into SCCM. So this will this is a special discovery. Like Toronto. <coughs> 
The physical side? You mean? No, no. Uh, AD sites. AD sites. If you have anything in AD sites and services, okay. it will bring those sites. So for now, it has only default for site. So here, forest discovery is discover. <coughs> it discovers uh, AD sites. Did it also say here in description here? It says description. Yes. Yes, it is in the description, but I want you to remember a few things about this. So forest discovery guide. Forest discovery. For forest discovery, I want you to remember these things. Forest discovery. Number one, it will, or as soon as you switch it on, without any discrimination or without any selection, it will bring all the sites from Active Directory Sites and Services and bring and create boundaries automatically. So if you have 200 sites, it will create 200 boundaries. If you have 4,000 sites, it will create 4,000 boundaries. So this is an automatic boundary creation. This is automatic boundary. All other stuff is discovering computers, users. This one is creating boundaries. So this is, this will automatically, automatically creates boundaries based on AD sites. Let's say in my Active Directory sites and services, so ADSS, I have just one site. I have default per site Default for site, as soon as you switch this on, in boundary, it will automatically create a boundary for a default for site. So in boundary, it will create a boundary. It will create a boundary for this. In SCCM, creates a boundary for default It will create a boundary for default per site. So, how come it create like automatically? You have to select something, subnet or IP test. This is what I'm saying. In this, you don't select anything. Now, I'll come back to your question. Guys, let's understand this for a second. Let's say, where is this valuable? Guys, this is valuable in a very small network. It is not good for large subnets, large networks. So this this option is good for small sub small networks. Now let's say your company has only two physical sites. So your company has a Toronto site and it has one as Windsor site. Now, first of all, as being a SCCM admin, guys, you must all remember, as being a SCCM admin, what is the function of site? Why do we create site? So you need to get, go back in history and understand what the sites were, why sites were. Localization of, localization of service, you have sites for localization of service, so that you want to dedicate, you want lo people to log in to their local DC instead of other DC. Fast and then the fast service and all that, if you can remember. So here, localize. Now you have two sites. How many sites? Two, two sites. sites. In SCCM, SCCM will not work if you don't create boundaries, or can it work if you don't create boundaries? No. It That's cannot not. work. SCCM cannot work if you don't create boundaries. It cannot. Now, there are two ways to create boundaries. One, manual way. This is a manually created boundary. Guys, it is said that if you create boundaries manually, it is more controllable. I can control them. But guys, let's say I have a very small network. I have a very small network. And in that network, I have two sites that are working perfectly. So instead of manually creating it, all you need to do is you will go into forest discovery and you will switch this on. This forest discovery is automatically go to 80 sites and create two boundaries based on these two. So in a small network, this is a very good option. But guys, in large network, it will be very tedious to manage it. Do you understand that? Do we understand that? Yeah. Now, so in a small network, it was only two sites and it created boundaries. You can control those boundaries. But let's say in a large network, there are 200, 200 sites. 
And if you bring all 200 sites, maybe you don't want to manage your complete SCCM for 200 sites. So guys, for that reason, your forest discovery will be switched off to start with. You will only enable forest discovery when you really know that you don't need to create boundaries manually and you will be using AD sites to create boundaries. And re referring back to my previous examples, whose previous example? Mine. Mine. Whose previous example? Mine. My previous example. Yes, exactly. <laughs> my previous example. Guys, referring, what was my example? What was my example? My example was in one of the companies where I did, they had 2,000 sites. How many? 2,000? Exaggerated a bit. At 2,000, and it created 2,000 boundaries. So what was what was wrong in that network? The only thing that was enabled in there is forest. Nobody created those site boundaries. Since they only enabled forest discovery, it automatically took all the sites and create boundaries. So this is why it is tedious to do it. Let's do it and let's see if it can create that boundary. Okay. So in order to see this, guys, let's look at this first. In boundaries, I have only one boundary, right? Now, I want you to, before enabling that boundary, I want you to open site, Active Directory Sites and Services. So go to your domain controller. Go to your domain controller first. Guys, go to your domain controller first. And within domain controller, log in. And open Sites and Services. Log in and open Sites and Services. And when you open Sites and Services, how do you open sites and services? Open server manager and then go to tools and within tools you can go to sites and services. So sites and services, as soon as you go there, it will show you how many sites are here. So how many sites are there? There is only one that is default first site. Okay, so there is only one that is default first site. Default for site is, so if you go under sites, guys, this is the only, this building type structure is one site. So basically, if my theory is right, then when I enable forest discovery, this should be, there should be a boundary automatically created based on this. Okay, <coughs> let's do this. So go on to SCCM, and in SCCM, go to discovery, and within discovery, just double click on forest discovery. And within forest discovery, just say, okay, enable, <coughs> enable active directory forest discovery. And here it says automatically create site boundaries when you, when they are discovered and automatically create IP ranges as well. Although you can disable it as well, but disabling it, it, I mean, there is no purpose of then, then enabling forest boundary, forest discovery. Now we'll leave the default. I'm not changing anything. I've just enabled the forest discovery and all I need to do is Okay, guys, and now I go to assets and compliance. Oh, sorry, going into administration, going into boundaries, and in few minutes, in few minutes, you should be able to see a boundary created with the name default per site. Guys, always remember SMS stands for system management server. SMS. Stand for system management. How many versions are there? It was version 1, 2, 2003, then 2007 SCCM. SMS stand for? And what is this? Slow moving software. We, we call it as a joke. It's a slow moving software as well. It's a very slow moving software, guys. With SCCM, we must have one thing that is must, 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 and that is lots of patience. So if it is not coming, just you can start doing something else and wait. Otherwise, I mean, this should be okay. If I go refresh on this, it's not. Now, sometime, if it is not working, you can force it. Just give him a hand, man. Good tip found. <laughs> Otherwise, I could have <laughs> refresh, refresh, refresh. I mean, I'm saying that you have to have a lot of patience. I'm the one with the least patience. <laughs> no, no, I have a lot of patience. 
Okay. I mean, I never knew that this mantra can work. You go here and then go back. Okay. So all we did, guys, why I went to all this? Because this is an interview question. <clears throat> they might ask you that boundaries can be created, but can boundaries be created from discovery? Yes. They can be created through forest discovery. What is the mechanism? Mechanism is very simple. As soon as you enable forest discovery, it goes to sites and structure, picks up all the sites, create boundaries. The downside for this is then it will be tedious to manage those boundaries because so many boundaries. You don't know what IP addresses are. When you make them manually, you do know which IP addresses are where. So one question, sir. Yes. What about the boundary group for this uh, default person? So, it was a you, different boundary group. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. The one we had already created, the boundary group uh, building. Yes. Building one, building floor one. Yes, yes, yes. And what about this one? Oh, create a boundary boundary. good. So guys, here, as you can see, it is a boundary created, but this boundary is not used anywhere. In order to use this boundary, you must either create a new boundary group or add it to your existing boundary group. So here, I will go in the boundary group, double click in the boundary, and then within, sorry, within right click properties on a, uh, sorry, right click properties on a boundary group, and then go here and just say add, and add this default for site as well. So you just went added it, that's it. So now this boundary group has both. Now. So guys, this is about discovery. So boundary, boundary group, discovery, everybody who is not doing following me, please, guys, please, by next lecture, please have your lab ready. Otherwise, you'll be lost like a no. <laughs> you said your name. Otherwise, I would have said Gubachi Ga. <laughs> Everybody understand Gubachi Ga? Do we understand? Man, many people can understand Gubachi Ga, but have you seen a Gubachi Ga? <laughs> Why itni inkisari? You don't have to have that inkisari. No, <laughs> man. Okay, let, let, let's look. The only thing we did today is, the only thing, guys, the only thing, we created a boundary, boundary group discovery, and then some devices are discovered, and now here, it's, it's only, so, if you don't want to be a uh, GG, if you don't want to be a GG, and GG is? Gavachi ga. <laughs> it is. Guys, what is a Gavachi ga? Have you, can anybody simulate Gavachi ga? <laughs> Guys, Gavachi ga is, when, I mean, if you have seen that in, in Pakistan, Gavachi ga is a guy that is roaming around in, in streets just with a... <laughs> Guys, I don't want you to be like this. That's what I said, just not thing No way. If you don't have your lab ready, guys, trust me, it will all go above you. For now, I know it is understandable. So next time, your choice is this. Do not install. This is my suggestion because you won't do it in one day. You have another lecture. Just today before leaving, make sure this is your responsibility to copy it from the other machine. It is not the person's responsibility who has it. It is your responsibility before leaving, have the lab in your machine. Okay. So... And, and I'm still in configuration mode. Once after configuration mode is done, we'll start making packaging. Guys, this is where the real real stuff is. So as soon as I'm out from here, as soon as I'm out from here and in this, this is basically the main factory where we bring application, package them, and then deploy them. This is where your main brain will be used. For now, this is just basic configuration. Okay. Now, the second thing, so today we just did Boundary, boundary group, discovery, discovery, and then it discovered some element. Just one last thing about discovery is that if somebody asks you to force discovery, by default, discovery is every seven days. Discovery is every seven days. If you need to force it, you can right click on it and force it. Just like in GPOs, in GPOs, I can force GPOs by GP update, remember? So if you need to force discovery right now, just right click on discovery and force it. It will run right away. So, question? So what's the difference between 
so if you create a site in AD, that site will only be used for AD purposes. So that site is only good for domain controllers. Yes, then SCCM will use that site as well for its own purpose. Let's say, let's say, let's say. So please come in. Yeah. This is confusing. Yes. So please come in. So guys, let's say a domain controller. <laughs> Good. No, uh, smiling domain controller. Guys, domain controller. Domain controller has its own sites. So two sites, Montreal site and Active Directory site. Here I am SCCM. Now, if you're SCCM admin, you're thinking, should I create my own boundaries or should I borrow sites from him? Now he has his, its own site structure. So the only thing that this site's helping SCCM is, I'm just saying, okay, so these are your sites, three sites. He can create sites here in SCCM. He's saying, no, no need to create sites in SCCM. Just take the IP configuration from DC. As soon as I took it, SCCM will start using it. So two are two different things. Thank you. So do we understand the relationship, Kai? The relationship is you take DC boundaries and SCCM is saying, we don't need to create site, let's create the IP configuration, everything from there and use it. Both are both are working on two different stuff. Okay. Now, guys, the next very important stuff is, is this. So go to assets and compliance and go to devices and within devices, let's select <coughs> this device that does that has no in front of it. So in your case, you should select client. So select a client. And in my case, I'm going to select a DC because this is the only one that has no in front of it. You will, you should select client. Now, let me see your. So first of all, since we are going through this environment, guys, I'm, I'm repeating again. It is your responsibility to copy the labs. So copy them during the lab, during this class. You have exactly one, uh, one hour. Uh, take the lab so that before next week, you should have it, have them ready. Now, um, so guys. First of all, my question, my question here is, I want to see which clients are good clients, which clients are bad clients. Guys, bad clients mean SCCM has no control over those clients. So the clients that have no in front of them, SCCM has no control over them. But the client that has yes in front of them, it has, SCCM has all the control on that client. For example, SCCM knows that where the SCCM client is. So this is, this is, this is actually, this is actually like that. So now this is your SCCM environment. This is your SCCM environment, SCCM, and this is your Windows 7 machine. Now SCCM is saying, you know what? I can. I I discovered this. I I discovered this. So this is looking at this, and it discovered. Now discovered means that this Windows 7, I can see Windows 7, but this cannot do anything on this Windows 7. Meaning. You can, SCCM cannot deploy anything. SCCM cannot inventory anything. SCCM has no information about this machine. Only it needs that this is alive. As long as it is alive, it can show you the device. For example, if in your environment, there are, so you are discovering all these, and among these, these are all on, and those are all off. Off machines, it cannot discover. It can only discover on machine. As soon as those others are on, they will be discovered as well. So basically, it's just pinging and seeing the world in the environment. Now, it is here. It is right here. Now, in SCCM, now SCCM needs to install SCCM agents. So this is called SCCM client. Guys, SCCM client is basically, first of all, it's a small software that exists on SCCM CD. It's a small software that exists on SCCM CD, just like Citrix receiver. Remember Citrix receiver? Yes. Citrix receiver, you have to take it from the CD and install it exactly like that. You have to install SCCM client from, you can take it from SCCM CD. Now, SCCM client exists in many different places. So here, Huh? No way. Let me undo. <laughs> Why? I saw you standing here doing something. That was selfie. No, really? 
अब अब नेक्स्ट टाइम ना आपने यहाँ पे खींचनी खड़े हो गए और नेक्स्ट टाइम रजा की भी बारी आएगी और साक्षी की भी बारी आएगी ओके लेट्स ओके क्लाइंट सो इट्स योर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू हैव द लैब रेडी Your responsibility. Your responsibility. Please have the lab ready. Okay, here. And whose disk is this? Is your disk? Okay. Okay, good. Okay, guys. SCCM client. So one liner for SCCM client is it is software. It is a software. It is a software. that is installed on all computers that must be managed by sccm it's a software that is installed on all computer that must be managed by sccm now if this software is not enabled and not connected then that client is not accessible how do you know in devices you should see yes if it is not yes it means that it is not available it's not working now in this so client installation first of all where can we get it where can we get sccm client guys we can get it from multiple places we can get it from multiple places so number 1 we can get it from uh, sccm cd sccm cd or iso we can also get it from sms underscore cnd shared folder shared folder you can also get it from sms underscore shared folder where can you get that shared folder guys as soon as sccm is installed for the first time this is your sccm server it automatically installs some shares in the background so on this server there are some shares that sccm will be and one of the share is sms underscore cmd and this is just sms this is the site code so there will be a shared folder on all sm on all on all sccm server so you can get the client from here from cd or you can get it from here as well meaning if you are if you want to install a client on this machine i mean you don't have to have a sccm cd you can go to sccm share and download it so you can do it in both so it's places by huh? it is by default is in this share now let's go to this share now my question to you is how to access the share atep how to access the sccm if i need to access sccm server through a share how, what command would you write so the server name we already know the server name is canx sccm 01 no 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 just just a simple command just a simple command it will be double backslash and canx sccm 01 that's it enter as soon as you enter this name anywhere it will show you all the shares on this you are right as well you can use let use and see the shares as well but this is a very simple way of doing it okay now let's see the shares so on your sccm server guys if you're not following me write write it down somewhere so you you can do it so on your sccm server on your sccm server just go to start just go to start right here so right here just move the mouse right at this side and click click on start just so you can drag the mouse right down this corner and this will come and here you can select this so just go to the screen and all you need to say here just start typing this this share name so double backslash just say double backslash 
and your SCCM server name. So this is C-A-N-I-P-S-S-C-C-M-0-1. So you would just say this. You would just say, type this and enter. And as soon as you enter, guys, it will automatically show you the shares that exist on this, uh, on this server. And among these shares, the most important share is this share, the first one. It says SMS CND. Guys, SMS CND, SMS CND, SMS CND is basically, this is your site shared folder. This is your main place where everything is sitting for SCCM. So from any client machine, you do it, these all shares will be there. So for now, don't look at other shares. The only important share for now is the first share. Double click on that share, double click on this. And as soon as you double click, inside there is, a, there is another folder called clients. So here I'm gonna write this. So first of all, it is double backslash, canx, SCCM01 slash, uh, slash SMS underscore CND and then client. And then client and within client, you just go to client and this is where all the uh, complete SCCM client is sitting. So you can go on to any client and this is where the complete setup is sitting. So next time when I ask you to install a client, you should not ask me where can I get the client. So your client is always on your default SMS share, SCCM share. And I didn't create this share, this was automatically created by SCCM. So now let's look at this. Guys, in here I have few files. I have a file called CCM setup exe. I do have two other folders here. So let's see what is in this folder. So in this folder, one important file is ccm setup.exe. So ct ccm setup.exe. Guys, this is the client installation file. So this file is the client installation file. Client install file. This is client install file. Just double click, write down the file name, and in front of the file, just write client installation file. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just uh, installing another client for SCCM so that I can have a client without SCCM. Uh, no, no, don't install it on a DC. A DC will give you issues. So just install a new client. If you if you already have agents, just install another one. You should experience it one more time. Okay. So in my case, I'm building a client. You already have a client. That is so, guys. Now let's look at it. This client that I'm building now, it is not discovered yet. Once it is completely installed, I'll join it to the machine. I'll join it to domain. I'll set up IP address and everything. And then it will, uh, and then it will be discovered. Now, now let's look at this while while this goes on. So SCCM. Now your client installation file is what is the file name? CCM setup. So CCM CCM setup.exe. Guys, as soon as you install this, run this file. This file will automatically detect that it's now you're running this basically on this client. So you have a Windows 7 client. In this Windows 7 client, first of all, you went to the share number one. Number two is you ran this file, you ran this file, run, uh, run the file. And number three is, number three, this file will see that if it is a 32-bit machine or a 64-bit machine. This file will automatically detect if it is a 32-bit or 64-bit. If it is 32-bit, it will select this folder. If it is 64-bit, it will select this folder automatically. Now within this folder, let's say if it is 64-bit, so next thing it will detect if it is x86 or if it is detect or 64 bit. Now in this case, whatever the case is, it will select one of them x64. Sorry, it is i. Is it i? 
I386. This is I386 and this is X64. So if it is X64, then within X64 it will go inside, guys. Now there are two more files. There is one file that is known as client.msi, number one. And, <clears throat> and then, then there are these other helping files. So client.msi. So within this, it will run client.msi file. So this file will only detect what type of operating system is there. Based on this, it will go inside this file. And then number four, it will run client.msi file. And as soon as this runs, it will install the agent. Install SCCM client. Guys, it is where the, pro where the problem starts. Now, yes, you can manually install it, and this file will run. This file is supposed to run. So, one more time. One more time. This is where I am. Can this, you feed the whole? Yes, this file. is where I am. Now, we did boundary, boundary group discovery, discovered the devices. Now, I can see many devices. Now, my next, my next task is to start installing. My next task is this to start basically uh, installing agent on this. So this one, it does not have an agent. Now in order to have that agent, there are many, there are at least five ways to install agent. But before even that, you need to understand what is an agent. So agent is known as SCCM client. Mm -hmm. And SCCM client, if SCCM client is not on any machine, SCCM cannot manage it. SCCM cannot manage that machine. So for that, you must install SCCM client where can you get SCCM client? Two different places. You can either get it from CD or you can get it from SCCM server itself from a default share. So we went here in the default share and we found this file. You can run this file. This file basically it is, so you went to the share number one, went to the share. Secondly, you run the file. Third, it will detect if this machine is x 32-bit or 64. This is 64-bit. As soon as it is 64-bit, it runs this file and installs the client. Very simple. Now, guys, this is what happens. So let's let's go down into this. So here, this is my Windows 7 machine. This one is Windows 7, Windows 7 machine. Within Windows 7 machine, it will run this setup. Now, when running the setup, guys, when running the setup, now remember this. Remember this. What it is doing basically, guys, where is the where is the where is the complete folder sitting? Where is the complete folder? Is it on the client or SCCM server? SCCM. It is on SCCM server. So the very first thing it does, it will copy the complete client installation folder to the client machine here. So basically, in this Windows machine, it goes inside. So I'm going to say 4.1. What it does, it in inside Windows. Inside Windows folder, it creates another folder called CCM setup. It creates an automatic folder in the client machine. Now, guys, this is where things are getting a bit complex. Now, the I'm showing. Uh, you mean like, uh, Windows 7 client? Yes, yes, Windows 7 client. Because you ran the setup, you ran it. You ran it. You ran it on, and that, uh, on a Windows 7 machine. You don't need to run it on SCCM. You're running it on Windows 7. As soon as, as, soon as it is run, it will det it detected it. And once it is detected, it will run the this file, client.msi file. And the very first thing it will do, it will go into the Windows folder and create a folder called this. Now, why this is, why do you need to know this? Yeah, that being the SCCM admin, you need to know each and every step inside. Now, this step is, let's say, you are running this and you don't find this folder, it means that it is not properly installing the client. So after installing, it saved the setup there. For now, it is not installed. I'm saying installation is started. The very first part of the installation is that it creates the folder. And it, after creating the folder, it will copy all the installation files. So it will copy all in installation files. So in this folder, you would see all SCCM installed files in this folder. And guys, at the same time, at the same time, it will open a process. It will open a process. So 4.2, this is 4.2 basically. It copies all the installation files on this. 4.3 is it creates in processes in task manager, task 
manager in task manager in task manager in task manager within processes in task manager within processes you will see a process running ccm setup this is multiple places where you can see where the agent is running so basically you're on windows 7 you went to the setup and you ran this as soon as you run this you would see that in task manager in processes tab here you would see this is running as soon as this is running in the background it created the file copied all the file and now doing the install okay yes so if you know uh, all machine is 64 bit instead of uh, running ccm setup, you can directly run it you can you can yes you can directly run it it will run yes you can but but the best is to let it let it automatically detect okay now now guys here uh, now here here now let, so this is this is how the client is being installed this is one thing to remember guys the second thing to remember here is that SCCM so I'm gonna pause this I'm gonna pause this here for a second I'm gonna pause this here for a second let let, let it let, let you absorb this so in, in in one minute absorb this please <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a complete video. No, no, I have. Yes, there it is being made. There is one thing you mentioned the video, like you go to the paths. What's the other command line? No, no, but I'm asking you. Because I have the same problem too. So, anyway, don't worry. <laughs>
आपको आता नहीं है उसमें नहीं व्हाट्सएप पे आता नहीं लिखा कैप्शन लिखा नहीं आता मैं लिखता हूँ हमेशा देखिए लास्ट वाला मैंने भेजा था एसीसीएम डे टू पर जी जी इतना आसान नहीं है लेकिन दिखाना चाहिए उसको इसमें बहुत करके ट्राई कर सर इसकी फाइल नहीं है इतना इतना ऑटोमेटिक भी नहीं है अभी मैंने थोड़ी सी नहीं और बता दूं फाइल सर इसकी रन नहीं हो रही है डबल क्लिक करना हां जी डबल क्लिक करके मैंने तो कहा ही कि आप डबल क्लिक करना है इधर इधर किधर किया आपने मैंने इधर भी किया उधर भी किया बाहर भी किया जाए इधर आप इसकी फाइल ये सिर्फ थोड़ी देर के लिए वो दिखा रहा है यही तो मैं कहना चाह रहा हूं बुक गायब हो गया अब आप जाए टास्क मैनेजर में प्रोसेस पे चेक करें ये प्रोसेस चल रहा होगा देखें मैं वो देख के आ प्रोसेस में ये चल रहा है दोबारा कभी
otherwise now here guys a uh, machine now let me show you first a machine with agent and without agent how do you verify let's look at this now let's look at this here so for example if i look at if i right click on any machine and if i go on to the machine here and go on so right click on a machine on any discover device right click on any discover de device you will see many many settings here so you have these settings now the the one setting that at the moment i'm interested in start so just go to start and within start just go to a resource explorer and within resource explorer just open resource explorer as soon as one more time this is what i'm doing right click start resource explorer one more time right click start resource explorer now guys within resource explorer what do you see under hardware hardware of the client hardware of the client do you see everything this do you see everything here yes it is because there is no client on this machine so so this is the point here to show you is that once your client is installed successfully once your client is installed successfully you should be able to see this as long as you don't see this here this is empty it means that client is not working so this is your end result that you need to see right so now 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 let's talk about let's talk about so with this stuff with this stuff let's talk about how many ways client can be installed on our client machine now how many ways so this is how many मिनट्स but sometime it's very quick yes is the process change hua ccm se wo system ka ek process ban gaya so so in the main i i think in the main uh, so let me first show you this and then okay maybe you can take one minute and run that on on windows 7 client take one minute and run so go to this share go to the share Just go to this file and run this file. So from the client side. From the client side. Just run it. जी 
Yes. So if you run in the background. Sami, did you run the CCM setup file? Or the X X sixty four Okay. Yeah. So just let it run. In the meantime, what you can do is you can also verify browse here, and it will create it will just create no, it won't. I mean, you must. The only way you can know it once here, it will refresh after. There should be yes. Check with Yes. So just let it run. So, and then you can keep an eye on that. So, uh, yes, it means that it is active. Sometimes agent is there, but client is off. If it is off, it would be active. Yes, yes. Yes, so it, it won't show you anything. You need to go to task manager. This is why I said process. In process, it, is, it shows you this is running. And then once it is installed, then you can go back here, just keep an eye on this. Here it should be yes, once you refresh it. No, 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 you won't. Actually, it will keep on running. The only thing here is once you refresh, this will change to yes. Okay. Sir, you can automatically process it to check when you pass it. So automatically, it will be CCM set up. So let it let it go. It is running in the background. It is a silent install. It's just running in the background. So that's fine. That's fine. The other thing, no. Uh, the only way you can find out is go to SCCM and here. So this one is active. So it should be active. So you just keep on refreshing it. Oh. So it's done? Yes, sir. Where? Excellent. Now, guys, so while this is running, I just want to share a few things here. Uh, number one is how to install. Uh, so, number one is you can install SCCM client manually. Number one. So, sir, on server 2, SCCM 2, still we have the same procedure? Yes, same thing. No, 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 no. No, no, sir. A server will do another method. Guys, there are few methods to install SCCM. And one thing I remember. One thing I remember. Guys, there is there is nothing like shift to leak your heart. Right? So, what I said, keep on saying that you made $100. It's just not that you don't do anything and... <laughs> it won't work. Try your level best and then think for the best. <laughs> then it will work. I mean, you keep on saying, oh, $100, $100, I am $100, $100, <laughs> and you're sleeping all day. <laughs> maybe, maybe, no, what they are it. Yes. Okay, so for that, don't, don't uh, I just wanted to clear that. You have to have that real strong hard work. Okay, here. Ways to install client is number one manually, which we just did. This is manually, but this is not a recommended way, guys. This is not a recommended way, but you should do it. I mean, it is installed. Guys, why is it not a recommend anybody? Why is manually not the recommended way? You're just installing on one machine. You're just installing in one machine, and plus, you have hundreds of machines to be deployed. Hundreds of machines. And maybe those machines are not in your reach. They are in different cities. So this is this is not the recommended way of doing it. But if you have some way of you're there, you can do it. But the guys, the recommended way is the recommended way is either push install, push install, push install, 
is an install that is pushed from SCCM to that machine. Push this, this, this method, uh, a client is pushed from SCCM, from SCCM to, from SCCM to the client. And that is done by just right clicking on that device and install client. So this second method I'm going to show you is this. It's very simple. It's right here. So if you go here on SCCM and within SCCM, you just right click on any client. Let's say on this client, I'm going to right click. Right click and install client. This is push install. So you right click on the device, on any device and right click and select install client. Now as soon as you do this guy, it starts a wizard. Now this is a push install. What is the main purpose? To install the SCCM client and it's very simple. When you go to the next step, it asks you three questions here. Number one question is, do you want to install it on domain controller? If yes, then you do, but guys, recommended is never. You will never do it on a domain controller. Second one is always install the client. What is this second option? This second option is just saying that if there is a client already or maybe an older version, should it upgrade it? Or should it always install it? Even if the client is there, should it still install it? So this is the second option. We'll go with the second option. And the third option is must. And that is you want to push a client from which site? Let's say this is, this is a Toronto site and you're doing it from Montreal site. So here you can choose a site as well. Which client gets clients from which site? So Montreal user, you would select Montreal. And here, since we have only one site, it will be only one site. So, so just remember when we do push client, just remember to do these two check boxes. Rest is very simple. Rest is you just click next and next, done. So this is a push install, push install. Now guys, push install can be done in many machines at the same time. For example, if you select this from here to here, I can, I can, I can select push install on all of them. So you can do multiple installations at the same time as well. This is, this will do the, exactly the same thing. Push install. As soon as you push it, machine will do all these steps. Machine will automatically go here download the software and then install it. So what you were doing manually, now it is doing automatically. So two methods. One method is manual install. Second method is push install. Guys, there is third method which is known as GPO from GPO. Install, so GPO install through GPO. Now through GPO, through GPO, through GPO. And I'm gonna ask you this question. When you do a GPO install, when you do a GPO install, when you do a GPO install, what type of file do you need? MSI. Not MSI. MSI? Yeah. MSI? Yeah. MSI, remember? Like software installation. 100%. Yeah, give me a minute, give me a thinking, good. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, so good remembering. Good remembering, good Hazar Dimagi. So, MSI file, and now my next question. So next question is also part of Hazar Dimagi. Guys, next question is, where would you get that MSI file from? It's already in that path. It is already in this path? Yes. Where? It's in the under 64-bit. Under 64-bit? That file is in there. You know that I know, I know, I know. But that was the best. Give me my hand, please. No. Good, good, good. So, guys, this, these are a few things to remember. When you do a GPO install, you must need an MSI version. And MSI is also part of the same folder. So, you can, you can, mass deployment of client can be done through MSI. For that reason, SCCM specially provided a client.msi. So, this client.msi is specially provided for for GPO implementation. If you want to implement it through GPO, you can still do it. Guys, fourth method is, fourth method is, you can do it from scripts. You can do, you can create scripts, programming scripts, and deploy it from scripting as well. 
Yeah, so you can create PowerShell scripts and deploy it from there. Number five is, which is not a very common way of doing it, but this is still one of the ways. So number five is through the OSD image. So through OSD image. Now OSD, guys, remember we did WD, uh, WDS. In WDS, yes. So you create a complete Windows image inside incorporate SCCM client and then through the image on machines. So automatically, wherever that OSD goes, your SCCM client will go over there as well. Nice. So that's another way of doing it. So this is through OSD. So one is this, second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth, and there is one more. I don't remember. I'll let you know later. But now, guys, we need to remember this is how client is installed. So by next lecture, guys, please make sure all of the client, other than this, you need to have client two and three have client two and three that all have a yes in front of them, yes and active, yes and active. Now in here, I just want to end up in last five minutes, and last five minutes is just this. SCCM one or SCCM two? So uh, we do have SCC, so we do have just this now. CL1, I need you to have SCCM CL2 and CL3. I need you. If you do not have enough resources, shut down one and then do the do, do others. So I need to have at least, if you can, have another one as well, CL4. Shut down the others and then just have these others ready. Now, the last thing that I want to do is for today is SCCM logs. Guys, since SCCM is a complex product, since, yeah, just, just no, I'm not going through huge big here. Just one pointer, just one quick pointer. You paid for five minutes. So here, guys, here, just one last point, and it's a very very easy point. I mean, hundred percent is not going to go over your head. This is not. Right. The only thing you need to remember about SCCM log, when SCCM runs its machinery. When SCCM is running its machinery, we do know that there are many gears running, many moving parts here, right? Guys, for each moving part, SCCM has a separate log. So it is said that SCCM has about 70 different logs where you can find error messages. So 70, about 70 different logs. Meaning, whatever you do in SCCM, there is a special log in which you see if it is working or not working. For example, once you deploy a package, once you de create a package, deploy it, it is going, so it creates one log for this. It creates actually three logs just for deployment. So guys, how many logs it SCCM has? About 70, about 70 logs. And the only last thing related to this is when you when you are stuck with the client installation, there is a special log for this. So especially for client installation errors, that special log is CCM log. CCM dot log. It is dot log. This log is used for SCCM client installation. This log is used for. So this log will show you if, because sometimes you won't even know what is happening with the client. Because when you run the setup, it doesn't give you a wizard. It, it's just doing it in the background. So the only way it, let's say, for a long time, it's not coming here, yes, after doing this. And then your only place is to look at the log file. Now, the question is, where is this log file? Guys, this log file is here. Follow me on this. So all you need to do on your SCCM server, on your SCCM server, go open Windows Explorer, Windows Explorer, on your SCCM server, open Windows Explorer, go to C drive, go to C drive, and then go to program file x86. Go to program file x86, go to configuration manager, no, 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 go back, go back. So on your SCCM server, C drive, Go to program files, not x86, program files. So within program files, there is configuration manager. And within this, there is something called logs here. 
So basically, you'll complete here. These are all of the logs here. So these are about all the, these are, as you can see, these are 78 logs here. 78 logs. So you need to, you need to remember, write it down, guys, write it down, write it down, that your log path is this. C. It's on the server. No, there are logs on, on client as well. There are many logs in client. To open the log file, to open log file, use a SCCM tool. Called CM setup, CM set, CM tools. Sorry, no CM tools. Open CM tool and then open log file. CM tool. We use CM tool to view log file. Now the special thing about CM tool is it is a live file reader. It will show it will show errors in red color. The tool is available at C program files program files slash Microsoft Configuration Manager slash tools slash tools and it is called cms guys go to this location so that this tool to read the file is available at this location c same location program files microsoft configuration manager and in there there is a tools folder and in that there is a tool called cm tools and i'm going there now so in order to do this all you need to do is you go back to the on the same folder And here, this is the tools folder. And this is the tool. Uh, you know, seriously. Sorry about that. CM trace tool. CM trace. CM trace. CM trace dot exe. Now this is the tool to read the file. Guys, the, the good thing about this tool is, this tool is a live file reader. So as soon as there are changes in the file, it will show you the changes and it will show changes in, in red color. So just open the tool, just double click open the tool and within the tool there, tool, tool there, uh, there is your ccm.log file. So ccm.log file, as soon as you open, as soon as you open, this is how it shows. So you would see everything here. Next, uh, in the next lecture, we'll start with CM, CM tools. And after that, just take a snapshot. So guys, everyone, start working on your uh, everything. Uh, huh? Yes. So you don't see anything? What do you mean? CM trace. You don't see in tool CM trace? Open? Okay, I'll show you. Uh, no, so change to open and go back to the within open. When you open, move it to the logs folder. Bring it to the logs folder. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.